Um, hi guys. All right. So today I'm going to have a create a quiff note on integumentary system. So this thing is going to be part of your test, right? So um, let me share the screen. All right. So let's look at uh, integumentary system. So um, not everything will be important for the test, but let me get my bars. Right. All right. So when we look at the in integumentary system, right? Usually a lot of people they say, well, it's a skin, right? So, but the actual definition of the skin is those two layers, epidermis and dermis, right? We discussed this in class. So the epidermis and dermis is actually a skin. So subcutaneous layer, or you can also call it hypo dermis is not part of the skin, right? Well, technically. So epi on top, dermis, and dermis that is right below the epidermis is the actual true, true skin. So the hypodermis, that's where the adipose tissue, the fat, right? The fat cells, that's where the fat cells are. So they right underneath a dermis. So let me clear this, all right? So the upper or outermost, outermost layer is called stratum corneum. So there are five layers. For our class, we're only gonna concentrate on three layers. Stratum corneum, layer number five, that's the last layer, uppermost layer. Stratum basale, layer number one, that's where the stem cells are. And there's another layer, stratum stratum lucidum. So there are different pronunciation. I pronounce stratum lucidum. So you will find, you will only find this layer in the, in the thicker parts of our body, at the palms of our hands, at the fingertips, where there's a wear and tear, uh, in the soles of our feet, right? That's where you will find this layer number four. So for our class, we're going to concentrate only basically on these two layers, layer number five, stratum corneum, and layer number one, stratum basale, that's stem layer. So stem layer, that's where the stem cells are. So that's where the growth of the new uh, skin cells happens. So the new skin, uh, the new skin cells, when they are developed, they will be pushing the old ones, right? So the new cell develop and they will be pushing all the way up, right? So, uh, if you look closely, right, epidermis, epidermis from here, from the stratum corneum all the way to the stratum basale, there are no blood vessels and there are no um, nervous tissue, right? So we call this layer a vascular, vascular. So a vascular, it means that there are no uh, blood vessels. However, there are blood vessels that right underneath and they supply nutrients, they supply oxygen into, uh, in right under the roof, I can call it, right? Right under the roof of epidur uh, right from the epidermis. So the nutrients from arteries get and they nourish this layer, the stratum basale. So, um, that type of shape is called derma papilla that is responsible for our fingerprints, not everywhere you will find in the body. So that's where the stem cells are in the stratum basale. So not only there are stem cells for the skin cells, there are also stem cells for, um, from melanin, melanocytes that produce melanin and care keratinocytes that produce keratin. So that keratin is the one that makes our cells are stronger, right? So stratum corneum, this layer, uppermost layer, has all around uh, 30 layers of cells stratify. Remember, we talked about stratification. So that's a bunch of cells, one on top of another, one on top of another. So it could be a layer of up to 30 cells here, stratified like that.
in stratum corneum. So the corneum, the cells are already corneated. So they're already opened up. So they're already dead. That's the dead cells. So there's a lot, a lot of keratin. So as the cells, the new cells progress from stratum basale all the way to the uppermost region, cells will die somewhere, 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 somewhere in the way. I'm not a specialist. I'm not a dermatologist. I cannot really tell you where exactly they're going to die, right? So there's a lot of keratin while they progress through other layers, uh, stratum spinosum, uh, spinosum or granulosome, while they will pass through those layers, uh, they will be filled by a lot of keratin and somewhere in the middle, somewhere close to the stratum corneum, they're already dead. So the stratum corneum, that's the dead layer, right? So everything that you see on the outside, we're walking dead people, right? Because uh, dead cells are in. So the cells are already open, right? So this squamous cells, right? Let's say the squamous cells there. So they're open, right? So there are no nucleus. The nucleus already gone. So uh, there are some other images. We'll look at some other images on, on this PowerPoint slide and you will see what that the cells are already uh, without the nucleus. So at that layer, at the stratum basale, that's where the melanin cells are being produced by the, uh, by, by the melanin, uh, melanocytes and by keratinocytes. So the keratin makes our cells stronger and the melanin gives the pigment to our tissue, to our cells, to our hair. So uh, also protects from U, UV rays from sun. So that's where the melanocytes and they give the color or they give the pigment to our tissue, to our cells. So that's what's important about this, uh, the epidermis. So it is a vascular. So the next layer, I'm gonna erase this. So the next layer is the dermis. It's a, it's alive. So this one is vascular. So because we have blood vessels, we have arteries that brings nutrients that nourish the entire region and they also nourish the epidermis. Um, and we have veins. So the veins, they take the waste out of that, right? Because your body produces waste and the veins, they will take out the waste. So carbon dioxide, gas exchange as well. So in the dermis, that's where everything is going on, right? So we have hair, right? We have uh, hair root, uh, hair follicle. Uh, actually, this portion of hair that is sticking out is called shaft, right? Shaft not the entire thing shaft. So this is, this is the hair root, the hair follicle, the follicle where the, uh, where the organ originates, right, grows. So all around are the stem cells that are responsible to produce hair. So this thing that is sticking out is called hair shaft, right? So a um, bunch of keratin cells. Um, so if we look closer at, uh, hair root, right? So there are glands. So this is a sebaceous gland, sebaceous gland, or the oil gland. So they produce sebum. They produce oil, just another name for oil, sebaceous gland. Also, you can see that a hair is connected to a muscle, Almost each hair on the human body, I'm saying almost because that's almost. Uh, dermatologists probably would say they would be more correct. Again, I'm not a dermatologist, but almost every hair has a, um, it's dedicated muscle, right? Uh, when I first found out that each hair has a dedicated muscle, I decided, okay, <laughs> I'm going to decide, right? So you see the muscle is connected. So the name for this muscle is erector pili. So rector, why it's a rector? Because when this muscle will be um, activated, for example, right? It will pull the hair, right? So it will pull the hair and the hair will be erected. So right now it's slanted, probably for the reason. So when the mosquito flies or where the, if the wind blows, right? So uh, it elicits the response of the hair. So the hair starts moving. <coughs> And that sends the signal, right? The muscle pulls the hair, sends the signal, and the muscles are highly innervated. So it means that there's a lot of nervous tissue. So, and that will send a signal to your brain that there is something wrong. Or if it's a mosquito, kill the mosquito, right? So if you would have a light touch over your hair, you can feel it. And the reason you can feel it because of that muscle, right? You stimulate this muscle by touching this hair. 
So, and the muscle is attached in the under roof, right, of the epidermis. So almost each hair has the muscle. I'm saying almost because I could be wrong, uh, probably all of the hairs, but um, somebody can correct me. All right. So, right, muscle, erector pili. So we cover stratum corneum, uh, stratum basale, dermal papilla, responsible for our fingerprints, um, sebaceous glands. So now the nervous system or the nervous tissue. So we have touch receptors, mesonary corpuscle. I will never ask you this name. So touch receptors, and we have that down deep uh, pressure receptors, right? Pacinian corpuscle, also will never ask you this name. So the touch receptors, they are higher and the pressure receptors, they're lower. So with the light touch over your skin, anywhere in your body, you can feel yourself right if you can feel yourself so there's a nervous system it's a mesh think of it's like a spider web right so it's like a spider web of the nervous system that sends the signal to uh to your brain to process that signal and 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 elicit a proper response so touch receptors and our pressure receptors so the pressure receptors obviously you can feel the pressure so also we have uh glands so we have a sweat gland i can call it i call it standalone gland because it's not connected to anything it's just a gland sweat gland that produces sweat and it leads like with its duct outside on top of the skin so the sweat gland is eccrine gland or it's exocrine gland eccrine or exocrine secretes its secretions its fluids on top outside outside of the body. So it secretes on top of the skin. So that sweat uh, cools off the body or can lubricate uh, the tissue. Similar with sebaceous gland can also lubricate and cool off the, um, uh, our skin, the epidermis. Uh, there are also antibacterial agents that can kill, uh, can kill bacteria. We have a lot of resident flora on, on top of our skin. There's a good bacteria, bad bacteria, but it's obviously good bacteria. So um, there's some people say that uh, when people take shower and then you smell in, the, I don't know, like in 15 minutes, and people say that is uh, just... Uh, because your sweat smells. Uh, sweat uh, is odorless. It's not the sweat that smells, it's the resident bacteria that is there, resides there. So that's the bacteria that smells, that gives that odor. It's not the sweat. Sweat is odorless. So I call it the standalone um, uh, gland. <coughs> Sorry. On another slide, I will show you why <coughs> I call that. <coughs> So, um, so that's the dermis. So we cover pressure, sweat gland, dermopapilla. So we cover all that. And it's the pore, right, of the sweat gland. So let me erase that. Uh, so the next layer, hypodermis, hypodermis, or subcutaneous layer. It's not a skin, right? So... It is the adipose tissue. So through adipose tissue is highly innervated and highly vasculated, similar to the dermis. So the blood vessels and arteries are here, nervous tissue here, and right under, under that, there's gonna be a membranes, there's connections, then there's gonna be muscle, and under the muscle is gonna be a, a bone, right? So in between, there's a connective tissue that holds everything. Right, so your skin can like, can really slide, right? So, but you cannot really pull it all away because there's a um, connective tissue right underneath. Um, so let's proceed to another slide. They're more visual, let's say. So look at the hair root, right? So this is a sebaceous gland. You see, that's the sebaceous gland that produces sebum, that produces oil. This is a standalone gland, which is the sweat gland, which is the exocrine or eccrine gland. And you see, there's another gland, right? Also a sweat gland. So this is a sweat gland and this is a sweat gland. So you will not find the sweat gland in uh, a lot of places. You can only find this gland in, in particular places. So this gland is called apo cream sweat gland and this one that is standalone 
I'm saying standalone so you will uh, remember it. So this is Ekrin or Exocrin gland. So you see Ekrin gland is not connected to anything. It has its own standalone duct, right? So dedicated duct, but epocrine gland also connected to a hair root together with um, with oil gland. So you can only find epocrine gland under armpits in the auxiliary area, under armpits, uh, at the grown area where the sexual reproductive organs are, at the scalp and in the face. So Eccrine gland, you will find all over the place throughout the entire uh, human body, but the epocrine gland only under armpits, mostly under armpits and in the grown area and in the scalp and in our, uh, on our face. Uh, there's another image that actually shows that you can see it a lot better here. You see, that's the eccrine gland or exocrine gland. And this is the epocrine gland, sweat gland. Right, so this image shows similar, uh, similar, uh, similar information, right? So you can see it's better here on this image as a sebaceous gland has oil. So when the hair is contracted, for example, when it's activated by a muscle, uh, when, it, again, uh, when it's being pushed, right? And pressed up against the, up, uh, up against the skin in, in internally, right? Uh, it will release uh, its own secretions, right? Sweat will be secreted and uh, sebaceous and sebum will be secreted as well. So I want to come back to this image. So you see the epidermis, right? There is um, a vascular region. So that's where the cells originate at the dermal, uh, at, uh, at the stratum basale layer. That's where the stem cells are. And you see the they have this type of shape. Uh, I think it's like I'm not really sure, but it looks like it's a cuboidal. Remember, so remember, right? We have cuboidal, right? Not perfect cube, right? We have columnar and we have squamous cells. So it looks like cuboidal and that, that little pinky or it's blue color represents the nucleus. And then when the cell progresses, 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 so uh, not everywhere you can see the nucleus. So they keratinize and they their cells are ready that. So we exfoliate. Um, I think it's like 50,000 dead cells per hour or per day. I could be wrong. I don't remember that some of you can actually, um, if somebody else will watch this video, can correct me and please correct me, special dermatologist. Um, right, so this is a lot bigger. So you can see this image, right? So that's the sweat. And again, it's not the sweat that smells. The sweat is odorless. It's the resident bacteria there is here. How to get rid of that bacteria? How to change the bacteria? I'm sorry. I don't know. You have to talk to the dermatologist. Um, uh, here, you can see a lot better, right? So that's the epidermis. This is the dermis. You see everything is... Uh, everything surrounded by cells. So around the hair root, there's a, uh, stem cells that are responsible for... Uh, production of the hair hair follicle here, and that's the hair root, and whatever is sticking out is the hair shaft. Standalone duct, right? Uh, that's the sweat or eccrine or exocrine gland, so many names for that. And I do not see there is a apocrine gland here. And also the nervous tissue. So the pressure receptors and um, let me record Pasco, the, the, there's nervous tissue. And, um, and I think this is it for, uh, for this part. So I think this would be good for, for the test. All right, guys. So yeah, I'm not forgetting anything. Uh, all right, guys. So uh, study, look at that, learn it comment if you want to ask me questions underneath of the video and I will try to answer it. Uh, take care. Bye.